At some point in your life, whether it's in your 40s, 50s, or 60s, you're going to want to switch your portfolio from one of a growth mindset to more of a portfolio that is more stable and generates a consistent income. In this video, I'm going to share with you five ETFs that are more focused on stability as well as dividend income that more mature investors might consider adding or incorporating into their portfolio. These ETFs, although they may have some growth, they're not focused primarily on growth. They're focused on stability and generating a consistent source of income for you. And as you'll see, these ETFs can be used to create a portfolio that gives you nice diversity while still generating consistent and growing income. Now, please remember that these ETFs, they're not my suggestions. They're just some ETFs that you might want to consider as you transition from a growth phase in your investing or into a retirement phase of your career. Here you see the first ETF you might want to consider. And it's one that's very popular right now. And I spoke about it in several other videos and I'll share a link here about SCHD, but it's SCHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. Notice when it comes to price return over the past three years, the S&P 500 has actually beaten SCHD, but not by much. But now we switch over to total return, notice what happens. SCHD has outperformed the S&P 500 during the same three year time frame. Those dividends have really made a difference during this time frame. So what kind of companies are in SCHD? Well, here you see they come from a wide variety of sectors, including energy, materials, industrials, consumer discretionary, staples, healthcare, a bunch of the different types of companies that you wanna be invested in throughout your entire life. However, this ETF is focused on high dividend yielding US based companies that have a record of consistently paying growing dividends and they're screened based on their fundamental strength against their peers as well as their financial situation. Here you see that SCHD has a nice low expense ratio of only 0.06% and here we see the holdings breakdown of SCHD. Notice that it's made up of a nice variety of companies including industrials, healthcare, financials, consumer defensive, and technology that make up the top five sectors. Now, when you look at its top 10 holdings, those are also very well diversified. Notice that the top holding is just under 5%, and the lowest top 10 holding is just under 4%. So nice diversity there. These top 10 companies make up 42% of SCHD. In all, there's 104 companies that are currently in SCHD. SCHD pays a nice dividend. It's currently paying a 3.75% dividend based on these nice, strong, seasoned companies. The dividend is paid out quarterly and the last dividend was 60 cents per share. Here you see its growth history. And this is what investors really like about SCHD. They like it because as it has a track record of really growing its dividends nice and fast. Notice that in 2012, its dividend was only 81 cents per share. And last year in 2022, its dividend came in at $2.56 per share. So its dividend has 3x over the past 10 years. So SCHD is a really nice ETF to have in your portfolio. And it's not just meant for those of us who are getting a little bit older. It's also an ETF for younger people that want to invest in companies that have been screened for financial strength, but have a history of growing their dividends. Next ETF you might want to consider is VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Now VOO invests in large companies that are traded on the US stock exchanges. They come from a very diverse group of sectors and companies. Companies. Here you see that the number one category is technology with over 26% of the S&P 500 or VOO being invested in technology companies. In second place, we have healthcare and then financials and on down the list. Its top 10 companies are ones we've all heard of like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google or Alphabet, Berkshire Hathaway, Meta Platforms, ExxonMobil, and United Healthcare Group. And all is currently 508 companies that make up VOO. However, its dividend is quite a bit lower than SCHD's. Here we see that VOO's current dividend is only 1.57% and that's paid quarterly. Now it does have a decent history of growing its dividend. Notice that back in 2012, it was paying a dividend of $2.84 per year which it did go up over the next several years. But then in 2020, it actually declined from $5.57 per share in 2019 to $5.30 per share in 2020. But since then, it started its climb again. One of the factors you want to consider about VOO is its expense ratio. Notice it's very low at only 0.03%. So a nice low expense ratio and a way to get access to the 500 largest companies traded in the US. So with VOO, since it does invest in some growth companies, you're more likely to get growth with VOO as compared to SCHD, but you also might experience a little more volatility. And since you are investing in more growth companies, then your dividend is also quite a bit lower. Now the next ETF you might want to consider is VYM, and that's known as the Vanguard High Dividend Yield Index Fund ETF. 
Here you see the price return over the past three years. Notice that VYM has underperformed the S&P 500 when it comes to just price return. And we switch over to total return, we see that again, VYM has underperformed the S&P 500, but not by much, only by a little over 3%. But when you stretch that out into a longer time frame, notice that over the 10 year time frame, the S&P 500 has really outperformed VYM. VYM has returned 146%, which is still a pretty decent return. But the S&P 500 has returned 209% when it comes to overall total return, which includes dividends. The expense ratio of VYM is less than SCHD. VYM is only 0.06% and SPY is at 0.09%. So what kind of companies make up VYM? Well, notice here this made up of both growth and value stocks across a very diversified group of companies with different market caps. However, it focuses on dividend paying stocks. And more specifically, it's not just any dividend paying stock. As you see here, it's the high dividend yield stocks. And here you see a breakdown of the various sectors that make up VYM. Notice that financials make up the largest percentage at 19%. And then you get into some more defensive sectors like consumer defensive at 15%, healthcare, industrials, and energy. Notice that technology makes up a lot smaller portion of VYM at only 8.5%. Then you have a nice piece of the portfolio that's made up of utilities at 7.5%. And notice it's top 10 holdings. We have ExxonMobil, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan Chase, Procter & Gamble, Chevron, Home Depot, Merck, AbbVie, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola. So some nice, really strong, mature, proven companies that pay really nice dividends. Now, speaking of dividends, notice that its current yield is at 3.23%. So a nice high dividend, a lot higher than what the S&P 500 is paying. Keep in mind this dividend is paid out quarterly. Now here we see this dividend growth history over the past 10 years. Notice that going back to 2012, it was paying a dividend of 1.59 per year. And that dividend has consistently grown over the past 12 years. So that last year in 2022, I paid a dividend of 3.25. So we see this is an ETF that's invested in high quality companies that pay nice high dividends and have a history of growing those dividends. Now the fourth ETF you might wanna to consider to have in your portfolio if you're reaching that more mature part of your life is Devo. That's known as the Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. Now one thing to notice here, and we'll get into why in just a minute, but notice that this expense ratio is a lot higher than the S&P 500s comes in at 0.55% as compared to SPY's expense ratio, which is 0.09%. Now looking at just price return, this does include dividends. Over the past three years, notice the S&P 500 has outperformed Devo by quite a bit. The S&P 500 returned over 40% during that time frame, and Devo was just over 23.5%. If we change this over to total return, we see that overall the two have returned pretty close. The S&P 500 came in at 47%, and Devo was just over 44%. So very close when it comes to total return. It invests in growth and value stocks of large cap companies, but it focuses on those dividend paying stocks. However, unlike with the S&P 500 and some of the other ETFs, its primary or main goal is to generate income. And it does this by selling call options against part of its portfolio. Its holdings breakdown is nice and diversified. Notice that we have healthcare, which is a nice defensive sector, coming in at almost 18%. Financials at almost 18%, technology a lot lower, but still a big portion of this portfolio at almost 12%, and energy at almost 12%, and finally consumer defensive at 11.6%. So a really nice diversified ETF you can put your money in that pays you nice high dividends. In fact, that dividend is very strong at 5.25% per year. And remember, the reason is that it's selling covered calls against a portion of that portfolio. That's similar to what we do on this channel and how we generate a lot of money every year to live on and to buy companies outright. Now, one thing that people really like about Devo is that it pays its dividend monthly. This gives you a chance to get that money sooner to help pay for your cost of living, to help pay for travel, to even help you buy other investments. We see some of its top holdings include Microsoft, you know, healthcare group, Visa, Procter & Gamble, Chevron, McDonald's, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan Chase, and Merck. So some really nice, strong, stable companies. And those covered calls help you drink nice cash against your portfolio of stocks. Now here we see this dividend, although it's a nice high dividend, it does fluctuate a lot more as compared to some of the other dividend focused ETFs. Here we see that in 2017, paid a dividend of $1.11 per share. And two years later, it was all the way up to $2.63 per share. But then in 2020, it dropped way down to $1.40 per share, and since then has climbed. So last year in 2022, it paid out a dividend of $1.85 per share. 
Now, one final thing I want to point out before we move on from Devo is that it's not nearly as diversified as some of the other portfolios. Although it has a lot of really strong companies in it, it's only made up of 24 different companies. However, as you see, they are very strong and mature companies. Now, a final ETF you might want to consider letting into your portfolio is JEPI, otherwise known as the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. Here we see the price return of JEPI compared to the S&P 500 over the past three years. Notice that JEPI has returned 7.7%. The SP 500 has been a lot more at over 40%. However, when you change this to total return, notice what happens. We see that JEPI is a lot closer, although it is still underperformed the SP 500 because it's only returned 41.8% as compared to the SP 500 at 47%. So, why am I suggesting you consider this ETF? Well, here you see that JEPI uses options to generate some income. As you're going to see in a second, that income is pretty substantial. It invests in both growth and value stocks across a very diversified portfolio that includes different sizes of companies. Here you see that it has a nice diversified breakdown by sector with technology in the top spot at 16% and then healthcare, consumer defensive, industrials, and financial rounding out the top five. Its top 10 holdings are Microsoft, the Hershey Company, Amazon, MasterCard, Pepsi, Adobe, Google, Progressive Insurance, Comcast, and Coca-Cola. And those top 10 companies make up 15% of its overall portfolio. In all, it has 136 different stocks that it holds in its current portfolio. But here's why people really like JEPI and why you might want to consider having a piece of your portfolio in JEPI. It's because of its dividend yield. Notice that it pays a current dividend of 11.43%. So if you're looking to generate income, JEPI is one that you might want to consider because it pays that nice high dividend. It hasn't been around that long. So here you see the three-year track record back in 2020. It paid a dividend of $3.23 per share. In 2021, it bumped up to $4.16 per share. And then in 2022, its dividend was $6.36 per share. The one thing you want to keep in mind about JEPI is that it uses what's called equity link notes. So if you're not familiar with that, you want to make sure you have an understanding of what that is before you invest in it. And I made a video about JEPI comparing it against SCHD that goes in details about what those equity link notes are. So if you'd like to check it out, I'll leave a link above and down in the description of this video. By the way, if you like the information you're seeing here in Seeking Alpha, they've agreed to give my viewers a nice discount as well as a free trial period. So if you want to check it out, click my affiliate link down in the description below. So what might a portfolio of these five ETFs equally weighted look like? Here you see we've created a sample portfolio that's worth right at half a million dollars. And we've divided it equally in between each one of the five ETFs that I just mentioned. We see that our dividend yields range from a low of 1.57% for the S&P 500 to a high of 11.43% for JEPI. And then we have dividends in between there in the threes and 4% range. And here in the annual income column, we see what each ETF will generate based on its current dividend yield. In all, as you see here at the bottom, it will generate almost $25,000 a year in dividend income. But what will happen to this income over time? Let's say that you had a portfolio of half a million dollars in these five ETFs. What would that income look like over time? Here you see based on its average dividend growth over the past five years of 4.6%. Although this year it's paying a dividend of $24,800. In five years, it should be paying dividends in the amount of $31,000 a year. Fast forward five more years, so about 10 years from today, it's estimated that the dividend will be $38,900 for that year. If you go out 20 years from today, the expected dividend will be about $61,000. And that's without reinvesting dividends without contributing any more capital to this portfolio. If on the other hand, you weren't quite ready to begin using this income, you can always reinvest your dividends. And here you see that we've done that. So we're still at the 4.6% dividend growth, but we're reinvesting our dividends. You see, in five years, our dividends have gone from just under $25,000 a year to over $37,000 a year. And in 10 years from today, it's approaching $56,000 a year. Now, if you have 20 years to play with, at the end of 20 years, it's estimated that this portfolio of stocks that's now worth half a million dollars will be paying you $129,000 a year. And keep in mind, that's without making any more contributions to this portfolio. If you'd like more information on how to generate consistent monthly income, kind of like Devo does and like Jeppy does, that's actually one thing that we focus on in this channel and in my Patreon group. If you'd like to get a message whenever we do trades, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how we generate tens of thousands of dollars a month by doing covered calls, selling cash or put options, doing poor men's covered calls. Check out the video at the link below entitled How I Made $431,000 in the Stock Market by Selling Options. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.